I've been shopping again. Bought some more junk. So I've got this uh, Bose CD radio thingy. Apparently, it makes a buzzing noise. It certainly does that. It also seems to be a distinct lack of bass as well. There's none whatsoever, and that humming noise is very annoying. All the sound seems to be coming from this side, and nothing from that side. And from looking at these online, it seems that that side's got the bass speaker in it, and that side's got a treble speaker in it. Which sounds a bit odd to me, as it's supposed to do stereo. But hey, yeah. So, we're going to gut this thing and see what's in it, and uh, hopefully make it work. Take that out, that might be a good idea. This thing stinks as well. It smells like, kind of like burnt resistors. It also looks like it's been damp as well. If you look at that screw down the back there, don't look very healthy. And put my CD up there out of the way. Back, back that up there. Yeah, that label looks a bit funky. Oh, the lid's off. I am surprised this thing worked at all. Look at that rust. That is minion. And what the hell's going on here? Somebody has snipped off the cables for one of the speakers and it seems to have been taped onto the other one? What the heck are they playing at? I bet there's something terribly wrong with the amplifier. I mean, looking at all the crusty crap down there, I'm not surprised, but... Yeah, that's going to be fun. Well, with all the gubbins out, we can see the extent of the liquid damage. It's looking distinctly like something was spilt on it, and it centred around that area. I'm not sure what that chip does, probably something to do with the audio. Well, it's all to do with the audio, really, but yeah. And the rest of it looks pretty good. We might get away with just a clean up and maybe some resoldering. Yeah. That speaker doesn't look very healthy. I think I'll shove a separate amplifier on that and see what it sounds like. The other one, however, looks fine. It's just all these wires with the uh, foam on them. The foam is disintegrating, it's going everywhere, it's disgusting. There's some more rust there. I'm guessing that's why they disconnected it. Bloody awful racket. So yes, I did a bit of cleaning up down there. Probably can't see it, but a lot of those white capacitors that you can see down there seem to be melted, so somebody's been soldering around there before. And I checked for any DC on the output for that amplifier, and it was perfectly okay. So I thought, alright, let's plug the speaker in, and well, you just heard the result. <laughs> I know it looks a mess, but I've got it going. Check this out. Right, so what it was, this chip here, it was missing its uh, positive 10 volt supply to start with. I was getting uh, minus 15 on the positive 10 side, which was just a little bit wrong. Turned out track was open circuit. Bit of closer inspection. More tracks open circuit. And one of the surface mount resistors as well was knackered. So I've sort of bodged that in for now. Because <clears throat> it was a weird, what was it, 35.7k resistor. I ain't got anything even close to that. So a couple of those together came to, what was it, 35.8. So it'll do. Uh, there's another one. A bit further back, if I'll find something to point at it with. Excuse me a second. Should have bought this before I started recording. Uh, that one there, that one was open as well. I put a bit of uh, conductive silver paint on one end of it to reconnect the track. And that seems to have sorted it. So yeah, we are now fully functional. As you can see, it is happily working. So, now all I've got to do is put it back together.
well, after I've given it a wash, because it's definitely been in a flood or something, because that's what caused all that problem in the first place, was liquid damage. Mm, time for a swim. <laughs> All nice and clean after its shower. Much better. Put the screws in vinegar, that got rid of the rust. There's a few other bits as well. Just got one left to put in, which is in there. And that's it, it's done. Yep, yeah, that's the last screw in. Put it on FM now just to see what it's like. The stereo actually works quite well, I'm surprised. Yeah, on radio 2. Put the CD on, press that, and we get the CD. Yeah. So yeah, bodgery that I've left in there is going to be removed. I just need to order the bits from Farnell. It's taking a bit of time because I need to find an excuse to spend 40 quid there. But yeah, other than that, it's finished, and it's good. I'm actually quite impressed with it. I didn't expect the uh, stereo separation to actually work quite as well as it does, but yeah, it's good. I might actually recommend one of these. That's it, my new resistors have arrived from uh, Barnell, along with a mountain of other bits. So that's now going to be replacing what we've got here. Here we go, there's my bodgery. I'm going to be replacing that one, and these two here. There we go, it's done. So that's that one there, that one there which has no markings on it, and I found another one which is just here, which you can't open the circuit as well, so I had a good hunt around and managed to find one, it was 100k. So yeah, I'll put it back together and test it again. Here we go, moments of truth. I've not powered this up yet. Ooh. See what we get. Sounds alright so far. Not bad. 